I planned a really cool road trip to take with my husband. I got my mom to come down and watch our daughter. And then you know what happened? He couldn't get off work. But that's a story for another day. So you know what I did? I took the dogs. Let's go. My final destination on day one would be Alpine, Texas, which is a little over a six hour drive from where we live. In order to break up the drive, I first stopped at Enchanted Rock State Park, which is about 20 miles north of Fredericksburg. This is only about mm, two hours from where we live, so it was a nice first leg of the trip. Enchanted Rock is a giant pink granite dome and the state park covers about 640 acres in Texas Hill Country. The granite dome rises about 425 feet above the surrounding terrain. And I actually remember tagging along with my dad and my brother when I was a kid to Enchanted Rock. My brother had some cool camping trips with the Boy Scouts and I was lucky enough to get to go with them. And I remember getting to hike to the top and it's, it's an easy enough hike for kids to do. However, the park does not allow dogs to hike to the summit. Dogs are only allowed in the campsites or on the 4.6 mile loop trail, which goes the perimeter of the park. So it, it circles the rock. So that's what we did. I parked at the campsites and set off on the trail watching for rattlesnakes as instructed by the park ranger. Enchanted Rock actually gets its name from Native American tribes that believe the granite rock has spiritual powers. You can see what are known as ghost fires flicker on the dome at night. Groaning sounds can be heard at night and the Native Americans believe the sounds were spirits. Geologists, however, say that the dome creaks and groans as temperatures change. And as for the ghost fires, the rock glitters on clear nights after rain. Some people still believe the rock is haunted and there are a number of ghost stories related to the rock. In the 1840s, Texas Ranger John Coffey Hayes, known as Jack Hayes, led the Rangers on a campaign against the Comanches in Texas. In one battle, the Comanches were able to cut Hayes off from his group and Hayes managed to find a hiding spot in the granite cracks at Enchanted Rock. He then managed to escape, killing many Comanches in the process. The Comanches felt that he violated their sacred land and the spirits of the slain Comanches are still said to haunt the rock. I also read one recent story of a visitor that took a pebble from their visit at Enchanted Rock and had nothing but bad luck to the point where he mailed the stone back to the state park. I can't say that I think Enchanted Rock is haunted, um, but I've also never spent the night as an adult. And um, so I'd love to know if you guys have been there, comment below if you've had any uh, supernatural experiences there. I admit I was a bit skeptical about whether or not it would be worth the trip since we wouldn't be able to go to the top of the rock. But as you can see, the loop trail is absolutely gorgeous. The the views are breathtaking. We passed a lot of other people that were walking their dogs. And even though we were nowhere near the top, you can still see quite a ways um, throughout the hill country. Uh, We were there during springtime. The flowers were all beginning to bloom. And luckily, we didn't see any rattlesnakes. Um, They are very active this time of year. All in all, it was a really great first stop to our trip. Here's a fun little fact about Enchanted Rock. It almost wasn't here. 
Um, prior to it becoming a state park, there was actually a lot of interest in this property to be used for a quarry for the granite that it's made of. Um, but thanks to Lady Bird Johnson, she was able to convince the president of the Nature Conservancy to use this property as a state park. So very thankful to her for that. From there, we stopped in at Fredericksburg for a little stroll around their historic Main Street. Fredericksburg was founded in 1846 and was originally settled by German immigrants. These immigrants primarily resettled in Fredericksburg from nearby New Braunfels, another German settlement um, that's only a couple hours away. I found it very interesting that Fredericksburg was part of the pro-Union Texas resistance during the Civil War. Many of the limestone buildings still stand from the post-Civil War building boom. The old courthouse is now the Pioneer Memorial Library. The old Nimitz Hotel is now National Museum of the Pacific War. And they actually have a little walking tour that you can download from their website and you can go and look at all these old buildings. Definitely recommend, it's kind of cute and kind of fun. Today, the Main Street is completely lined with shops and restaurants, and you can literally buy any touristy item that you want. And Fredericksburg is also known for their wine and their peaches. I've never had so many strangers want to stop and pet the dogs. Usually when I have all three of them together, we're a little bit intimidating, but maybe because we're German dogs in a German town, but literally we had so many people want to stop and pet and, and say hello. Not a dog, you guys. Those are pillows. Those are pillows. Yeah, those are pillows. Those aren't real, but very lifelike. Okay. You think those are real, buddy? Those are real. And I will likely plan another trip just to come to Fredericksburg. Um, but today we had to get back on the road so I could make it to the little Airbnb before it got dark. We brought our own dog bed. <laughs> oh, it's a bathroom. Oh, it's cute. So 
cute. And there's a backyard. <laughs> you guys have been outside all day. You don't want to be out there. How cute this little chair is. It's so cute. Thanks, buddy. It's a matching room.